Hey, Apocalypse Survivor and uh, Mike. How's my audio? Okay, cool. Yeah, so just to tell you guys where I'm at with this, I uh, came off the printer this morning at uh, 6 o'clock, something like that. I think it finished up. Um, took it off the printer and, or no, actually it finished last night, I'm sorry. Um, took it off the printer, just left it sit overnight. And today I took and kind of rough sanded, took all like the little zits and stuff off. Which, let me bring up the camera here so I can see it. Hey, Glenn. So, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this. You can see right in here, there were a bunch of zits. Every CR-10 needs calibrated a bit better. Um, but lots of starts and all the start and stop points and I had it set up for random so they're all over the place they're almost kind of like spiral up across the helmet um, so I got to tune that but I took and rough sanded those down cleaned up the top the helmet printed upside down just like this I don't know if you guys saw it on Twitter or not so you can see on the top there's a lot of filler in the grooves that was printed over top of the support material um, using Let's see. Using the Pro Bond wood filler, this stuff works pretty well for making a real quick, easy cleanup. Now, I put it on quite a bit heavy because I was kind of distracted as I was uh, doing it this afternoon when I got home from work. So now I'm sanding everything down, and like you can see on the front here, I'm sanding it down to the point that I can see the layer lines, but you can't actually feel those layer lines on there anymore. They're filled in. And any any imperfections this stuff's awesome hey Walter uh, yeah I saw you jumped in and I wasn't intending to hit the live button just yet but um, yeah so sorry about that um, but yeah so this wood uh, Elmer's Pro Bond wood filler works freaking awesome for cleaning up any defects in a print if you have a little bit of under extrusion for whatever reason spool got snagged things like that um, this wood filler is great and then once it's sanded down the best thing about it is like you know a lot of people use Bondo um, a lot of people use the uh, crap what's the stuff from smooth one um, the epoxy the two part stuff uh, I can't think of the name of it now off the top of my head uh, which I have some of that and I actually intended on using it on this helmet for the first time um, that the first time that I got to use the stuff but because of some of the imperfections and things it was just easier to use the probon uh, wood filler in order to fix it up <laughs> yeah apocalypse survivor prank stream hey John Mac how are you so sorry if the uh, audio is a little loud with me standing if it is let me know and I can turn it down a little bit um, I've got everything cranked up the whole way I haven't really adjusted anything This uh, skewed view, this is a hollow helmet, completely hollow. Um, it's actually the entire helmet, like you can see here, maybe, it's not that thick. This thing's only maybe a millimeter thick. Um, but the helmet is the SpaceX, um, the, the space, uh, Elon Musk's company, SpaceX. This is the helmet that... Um, Space, oh uh, shoot, Rocket, uh, what the heck was his name? Spaceman, I guess it was, or Starman. Um, the mannequin that they put in the Tesla Roadster that they sent to space on the Falcon Heavy uh, a couple months ago. Um, this is the helmet that he's wearing. I saw the helmet and thought, man, I really need to print one of these. But the funny thing about it is, you know, 
It looks like a racing helmet. I can't see all of the chat. And of course, I'm touching my computer <laughs> with dusty hands. Printing it upside down seems to have worked well. It did, yeah. Um, minimal supports. I mean, when this printed upside down, basically there were supports up to. Get that out of the way. There were supports up to about here. Um, and then I manually, in Simplify 3D, let me see if I can get a better angle on this for you guys to see it. Um, so inside here, you can see down in the bottom there, I did print some supports um, inside because as the helmet printed upright, So when the pr helmet printed like this, um, it was kind of like that. I was kind of concerned about this top lip here, but honestly, the support, Simplify 3D totally screwed up the manual supports. Instead of printing nice uh, zigzags for the supports, it was a little zigzag here, a little zigzag here, a little one here. And I mean, I had the supports stacked on top of each other. Um, so, Simplify 3D kind of gave me a little bit of extra work, but in all reality, I didn't need the supports. It probably would have sped this up. Uh, Simplify said, Simplify 3D estimated, I think it was 29 hours, and it ended up taking 46 hours from start to finish. Um, on the printer, that is, start to finish. So I probably could have cut some of that time down by not having those supports on the inside, but oh well. <laughs> Um, for anybody who's wondering, like I said, it's Purbon wood filler, uh, or Elmer's Purbon wood filler is what I'm using to fill the layer lines to get rid of them. Uh, once I'm done sanding this, the next step's going to be a coat of primer, um, using filler primer. I probably will only need one coat of that. Now I will kind of look things over and if I need to add some, uh, wood filler somewhere, I'll try to. Or I may hit it again with primer if it if it's just a little bit of layer lines. But really, once I do this stuff, it should basically disappear. Um, one coat of primer should be all I need. And then I can start masking things off. Um, most of the helmet, everything back in here, the bottom of it, that's all going to be white. This will be black. At some point, and the, the uh, bevel here is going to, I'm thinking I'm going to do chrome. I can't really tell from the pictures of it. Um, exactly, Ken. Yeah, time's nothing. Um, the end product's what matters. Um, I can't tell from SpaceX's pictures, but I think this is a chrome band here just to dress things up a little bit. Um, but the thing I did start saying, when you look at the helmet just like this, it looks like a racing helmet, pretty much. Except, you know, a racing helmet usually doesn't have the full face shield like this. You just have, like, the the visor shield on it but my wife actually thought that it was like a racing helmet or something like that she didn't realize what i was up to so this is actually the first full one piece helmet that i've printed on my cr10 um it was one of the reasons i got the cr10 and why i had been watching them for uh heck almost a year um so this is the very first one that i finally printed and i've had the cr10 since thanksgiving um, or Thanksgiving here in the United States, so back November 24th, uh, right around the 24th, I forget what day it was this year, um, but it was actually Black Friday, we ran down to Printed Solid and picked it up in the evening on uh, Black Friday. Uh, Apocalypse Survivor, what software, um, this is a question for everybody, what software or slicer generates the best, and I can't see the rest of your message, actually, you know what, let me do this. generates the best as in work supports um honestly i like simplify 3d most of the time i don't know simplify 3d seems to um go through phases where they're really really good and a lot of simplify 3d is cloud-based as far as the slicing goes so things can change even though your settings are exactly the same as they were a year ago or a week ago and you got a good print um sometimes simplify 3d can screw you up Yeah, you're right. It does look like the NASA robot head. Um, personally, I've been using Simplify 3D for just over uh, probably about a year and two to three months, something like that. 
Um, prior to that, I used Cura all the time. I never used anything but Simplify. The only reason I ever ended up getting Simplify is because um, I bought my Flashforge Dreamer, which only works with Flash Print or Simplify. So I got Simplify 3D because it gave me more flexibility. So if anybody else in the chat wants to answer Apocalypse Survivor's questions, um, uh, you'll get a different answer from all kinds of people about slicers, but that doesn't mean any one person's wrong. Uh, country, I got the model. Um, if you... I don't know the thing number off the top of my head. I kind of... This stream tonight was sort of just off the cuff. Um, but if you look on Thingiverse, search for SpaceX spacesuit. Um, it's on there. It's actually a full body guy, uh, like a figure standing in the spacesuit. Um, I took that, imported it into Mesh Mixer. Now, keeping in mind, that model is designed to print this big, okay, the whole person. Um, I took that into Mesh Mixer and blew it up. Uh, I forget the percentage. I want to say like 300% from where it was, which gave me, I have the measurements for my head, and I also have a 3D scan of my head that I can import into Mesh Mixer, so I can blow a helmet up and put my head inside of it and kind of turn the the helmet hollow uh, or sort of see-through on mesh mixer so I can see my head I can see the positioning of my head so I can actually scale the model to my head which is awesome um, so I scaled it up so that it would look like it would reasonably fit me now this is big enough my head isn't this big um, this is big enough for me to be able to put foam padding on the inside of it. That's one of the things when I did my Shore Trooper helmet. I put uh, foam padding inside, which gives you a nice snug fit. Almost feels like putting a racing helmet on to begin with. Um, but you can look around and you don't get like the bobblehead effect that you would get if the uh, hole's big enough for your head to fit in. Which, <laughs> oddly enough, the hole in the bottom of it, um, which I'll finish how I did this in uh, Mesh Mixer, the hole in the bottom of it, I have to put it right above my nose and then kind of just slowly work it around the back of my head. Like the hole is just barely big enough for my head to get into. And once I'm done with everything, I may take the Dremel and just kind of cheat a little bit and notch this out down here. I should have done an oval hole, but as you can see, I just did a, a imported a sphere in there to knock out this hole. Um, but the way I, oh, <clears throat> sorry, the way I hollered out the model once I scaled it in Mesh Mixer, I then took and shrunk it down. Uh, how did I do that? Now, I was going to originally scale it down a little bit and then subtract that one from it, do a Boolean operation and remove it. Uh, but what I actually ended up doing is uh, Mesh Mixer has the option to do uh, turn a model hollow. So I did that and it allows you to set the thickness of the model. I could have gone a little bit thicker on it. Um, I ended up doing a one millimeter, hang on a second, no, you're not chewing on wood down here, though. Um, I ended up doing a one millimeter wall thickness, which, I mean, it's, the helmet's solid. I can't squeeze it, but when you get down here on the edges, they do flex a little bit. Um, so I hollowed it out, then I took a spear from the bottom of it, sank it up into the helmet till I was happy with what I thought was going to be the right dimensions. And like I said, I got really lucky. It's darn close to not fitting me. Um, but a, a simple Dremel down here, notch that out a little bit more, and I'd be good to go. Now, I'm not actually planning on wearing this helmet, as you can see. It's solid. You can't see through it. Um, so I'm not concerned too much with it perfectly fitting my head um yeah exactly that's all i need is just big enough for my nose to fit through um i don't plan on wearing this helmet because it is uh opaque uh face shield on it that's just going to get painted black however uh mitch from mitch 3d offered he has access to a decent sized vacuum former um he offered that if i send him the model he'll print out basically the face shield of it to use as a book for a vacuum former that he can then put uh, a tinted black piece of um, acrylic or some type of plastic I'm not exactly sure what he's familiar with using but um, he could actually 
do a vacuum form of the shield so then I could just come along here with a Dremel if I wanted to and cut it out. I think what I'll do is this helmet's going to get hung on my wall. Um, for those of you who watch the Friday night hangouts, it'll be in the background on the Friday night hangouts. Um, and next week when we do the hangout, um, I actually have a totally different, not, I shouldn't say totally different setup, um, but my back, background's a little bit different now because I rearranged the office last weekend. Um, but yeah, so I may do another one at some point that doesn't have the fa the face shield printed in place and then use the vacuum form shield to go in there so that it is actually a wearable helmet that you could walk around in. Although my daughters have no problem walking around in it. <laughs> uh, Juan Adams, it's actually um, the SpaceX uh, spacesuit helmet for their... Uh, it's the spacesuit that they came up with for inter what they call interplanetary travel. So like when they send an astronaut to um, the space station or they send an astronaut to the moon or something like that. This is for traveling in between planets. Oh, yeah, okay. It does. It looks like a motorcycle helmet. And in hindsight, I'm like, why did I not just go buy some cheap motorcycle helmet and make the pieces to attach to it? But So if anybody has any questions on how I got to where I'm at so far, I kind of skipped some steps on camera, um, although I do have short snippets because I may end up putting a video together for the channel, but I figured, you know what? Walter put it best. It's easy to uh, do streams than it is to do um, edited video. So, especially something like this where it's a multi day, not a one shot project. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm going to kind of get back to sanding here a little bit. Um, but I'll look over here at the chat every now and then to interact with you guys. Just so you know, yeah, a little chalkboard effect. Um, maybe it was from my mini factory. I will, after the stream, um, it'll probably be this weekend while I'm camping. Uh, sorry, my dog's walking around. Um, I'll figure out where I got the model from. It was either Thingiverse or it may have been my mini factory um, that I got the model from. But John Mac, that does look like the right name. 3D printed SpaceX suit. Um, not sure about the number on it, but that does sound right. Uh, but yeah, what I was going to say, sanding. Everybody who finishes 3D models um, with paint or smoothing them out, whatever, always tells you the worst thing about it is sanding. You'll sand and you'll sand and you'll sand and you'll sand. I can tell you on the PLA itself, I spent 15 minutes sanding it with 80 grit sandpaper. Um, 80 and 60. I kind of switched back and forth because I have a little palm sander that I have 80 grit pads for and then I hand sanded a lot of it with 60 grit. Um, but just to knock off any anything that stuck out from the, the main print. Um, but these things here, this is a sanding sponge for drywall. It used to be about this long, but I've cut pieces off of it. Um, cool thing about this one is... I'm, I don't remember the grits, but I think the one side is 120. Actually, this side is 120, and this side is 220. So you just flip the sponge over, and uh, you can sand different ways. But the fact that it's a sponge, it's easy on your hands, and um, it contours to your part pretty well, too.
the other thing too when you're sanding a model like this you don't want to stay in the same spot all the time like that spot right there is actually pretty warm to the touch right now just from that little bit so like i'll sand there a little bit and you can see i'm trying to knock these the parts that are really light and kind of more whitish that's where the filler pro uh, not the filler primer i'm sorry the wood filler is still on there pretty thick um but then like down here that you're seeing lines striations of uh, wood filler in the seams of the print. This was printed at a uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height um, So you see the layer line then you see wood fill then you see layer line wood fill the whole way up So once you get to that point you move on um, Especially as you're doing it with the heavier grits to knock it down to begin with you just sand so you can see it Then once you've got the whole model the way you like it Then you flip it over or get out your 220 and then sand it down with your 220 um, you can go higher, but honestly, there's not much of a point when you're going to hit uh, filler primer on top of it. Once you sand with 220, filler primer is going to knock everything else down, um, and this thing will be smooth. gonna get it slightly loud for a second so I'll give you people with the headphones on give you about five seconds so ready one two three four that's not five seconds but five <laughs> Oh, the noise wasn't bad. Cool. I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. This thing's noisy as crap in front of me, and I can't hear myself think when it's running. <laughs> uh, here you guys can see it's a mess at the moment. This is where we normally do painting, um, and as you can see, the wall behind it is white, and there's no, um, no paint on the white wall at all, even though all the spray paint that we spray, we spray straight towards the wall this blower here goes up and blows out my basement window um, and has a filter on the outside of the window so that I'm not like taking the risk if it's a windy day spraying paint down the side of my house uh, but it just comes over to this flexible hose and we can position that wherever we want it but it works pretty well I know before like, on Twitter we've had that discussion of what the best way is to uh, do a paint booth in your basement coolest thing about that is it takes all the paint away and takes all the fumes away um just we're painting right in the basement so um but this is like our paint booth sanding area hey, when i say this is my paint booth sanding area this is an area about three feet wide by four feet long it's nothing big <laughs> 
Yeah, country. The perks of HVAC work. Um, this is actually the fan is a blower um, from a furnace. Um, I just hooked up the flexible um, aluminum flexible duct that you can get at like the big box home improvement stores like Ho uh, Lowe's and Home Depot, Ace Hardware. You can get everything except for the blower there. And then of course I did put this dial back here gives me variable speed so I can increase it and slow it down. Uh, yeah, increase and decrease the speed. Again, if you guys are uh, just getting in to the stream and you've got questions, feel free to ask any questions um, about the model, about the process that I'm going through right now. Um, if you have questions about things that I've done up to this point, feel free to ask any questions. Oh, and uh, just in case anybody saw it on Twitter as I was posting these pictures, I was asked what filament this was. Um, and at the time, I wasn't at the liberty to say, um, but now I found out later on today that I actually am. Um, this is Printed Solid's new filament. Um, they haven't really made a big deal about it yet, but they're calling it their daily, uh, daily PLA. So like daily as in day of the week, daily PLA. Um, it's supposed to be a cheap, low cost filament to compete with like Inland uh, Hatchbox, which this was sort of their answer to the reason why they got rid of Hatchbox. Hatchbox supply was getting pretty bad. They wanted a good, reasonable supply, so they've come up with their own recipes. Um, I mean, obviously with assistance of filament manufacturers, and uh, they have their daily build, uh, or daily, sorry, PLA. And that, that is on their website. I'm not affiliated with them besides being friends with Matt and a uh, customer of theirs that would recommend them to anybody so well, I guess I should mention I did get the filament for free this uh, one pound sp yeah two pound spool of it or one kilogram spool um, but that was for evaluation purposes before they decided to order a bulk batch of it that they were happy with the recipe and everything so what's everybody else doing tonight You guys can see there's what the uh, filler primer or keep calling it filler primer wood filler looks like after it's dried now you can see it's an uneven wavy nasty mess if you were to paint that it would look like crap um, and then there's what it looks like as you're getting down to where you want to be to go to a fine grit and then go to uh, actually go to filler primer spray paint But this stuff's cooler than Bondo. 
um, and your epoxy coatings and stuff like that because um, it dries in uh, I think you can apply the second layer after five minutes um, and then you can um, start sanding after 15 minutes it's dry and you can actually paint up um, I think it's after 25 minutes after you sand it something like that <laughs> yeah, that Fun King guy, he gets on everybody's streams and always causes trouble. You guys gotta watch out for him. You guys are up to 56 of the year already, a skewed view. I, I know I see you constantly releasing videos. Don't let Glenn fool you. He's not the king of fun. He's the king of trouble. <laughs> sure what you mean Juan uh, about the CAD for personal stuff or for work that might have been something earlier in the chat that I missed <laughs> at least it's a kick of something 70 designs that's pretty cool it's neat that you guys do all your own stuff um, kind of gets old when you see people everybody printing the, the popular print and stuff like that of the time just because I mean we can all print it. We've all probably printed it. I realize, you know, this isn't fully my model. Um, I redid the model in order to make it this big, make it just the helmet, make it wearable, all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, most of the time, I do a lot of my own models. Um, the helmets and stuff, that's something I still want to learn and get into, but uh, got a long ways to go. I keep playing when I get some free time, but free time comes few and far between, so... When I started doing this today, I was doing it outside and just had a uh, had my sanding sponges and sheets of sandpaper and stuff that I was using. And uh, I had put the helmet, just sat it on my lap. 
which means I'm completely covered in um, wood filler dust. But I came inside because it's dark now, and uh, doing this on a table sucks. <laughs> Just so you guys know. <laughs> Something this big, at least. Uh, one, uh, maroon or burgundy PLA. I'm not sure. I can't say that I've ever come across any. Where Where are you from, Juan? Do you have, um, I sort of, I'm a little bit hesitant to recommend it, but do you have a, uh, micro signer anywhere nearby? <laughs> yeah, country, you know what I'm up to. Taking a little bit of a break. It's, I've been sanding this till I've moved the laptop and stuff over here to set up kind of a quick stream. I was sanding for close to four hours this evening. You didn't see any burgundy. I wasn't sure. It wasn't wasn't sure that they had it and honestly like I said with the uh, the recent changes to the inland brand it's kind of getting hard to recommend them at least for now until they get their get their crap together uh, Glenn's recommending uh, I never know how to pronounce that right so I'm probably gonna kill it uh, essentium 3d uh, he's just posted the link there in the chat thanks Glenn hey Robbie Mac how are you So how many people do we have in here that are going to be going to, um, well, there's actually two events coming up. Uh, in two weeks, I want to say the Sunday around the 20th of May, um, there's going to be a mini meetup down at uh, Printed Solid. It's their second year anniversary. Um, and then who's going to Earth as well? Yep, Earth six weeks out. <laughs> there you go. Everybody do a hands up emoji in Earth if you're going to Earth and a hands up emoji and printed solid if you're going to the printed solid one. And if you don't know about the printed solid one, uh, I think they have some a uh, blog post about it on their. Uh, I thought they announced it somewhere. Uh, let me grab my phone. Yeah, Sean, anyhow, you should be there. Where is Printed Solid? Printed Solid is in Newark, Delaware. Let me look at my calendar here real quick. I can tell you what, when and what time. That is, if my phone decides to cooperate. Let's see. Too far, Australia. Yeah. Definitely. There's a few people coming from out of town. Um, for anybody who watches the Friday Night Hangouts, uh, Martin, 3DP Iceland, or 3D Printing Iceland, um, or simply the guy who does the landscape, uh, 3D printed and painted landscapes, um, he's coming from Iceland to Earth, which is freaking awesome. Um let's see the printed solid thing is i was right uh sunday may 20th 10 a.m to 4 p.m um so may 20th if you guys are around i'll be down at that one for sure because i don't go on call for work until the, that monday after that um unfortunately my plans changed a little bit for earth at the moment because my work changed our own call rotation so now i'm actually on call the weekend of murph um so I'm working on trying to get my weasel my way out of that or get somebody to cover for me. But I will be there. I may be driving my work vehicle, but I'll be there. Uh, 
Uh, Sean, I don't know. I know Printed Solid was announced at some point. Um, I don't remember when. I don't. I, it almost had to be on Twitter. Maybe it was on. Oh, you know what? It might have been on the Facebook group, the Printed Solid uh, private Facebook group. Yeah, uh, go on, if, I can post the link, uh, this weekend in the description for this stream. Um, the, if you search Facebook for Printed Solid, um, there's a private group. You have to ask for permission to, appro uh, to join, but, um, I do, I'm one of the administrators on it, so, um, if you guys apply, and it does ask you a question about 3D printing, put on there that you were on my stream or you watched the video, and I'll make sure you get approved. I mean, everybody gets approved. It's just sort of the only reason it's private is so that if need be, um, it's easier to keep people appropriate in there. That group is nowhere near as big as the 3D, the regular 3D printing group is on Facebook. And it's a family friendly community. Yes, once you, so far, the way Simplify 3D has been Apocalypse Survivor, once you purchase it for whatever it is, $150, um, that is a, um, currently my understanding is that's a lifetime uh, subscription essentially to it. Um, it's a lifetime one-time payment subscription, but then you're, uh, thus far, you've been grandfathered into all the upgrades. Uh, and they're licensing, I think... I think the official rule is you're allowed to install it on two computers, um, but I can tell you as I've changed computers, reformatted computers, things like that, um, I've never had to purchase it a second time or even like with Windows, if you wipe a computer and replace the CPU or do a major change like that, you have to tell Windows, no, this is the same computer. I haven't had to do anything like that with Simplify, no verification, so I'm not exactly sure if they actually have a lock on it or not, but, I mean, good practice, the license, I think, says two computers. <laughs> there you go, Robbie Mac. Now, you want to see my sanding tool pad? It's just too loud, and it honestly sucks. Right here. Uh, I, I shouldn't say it sucks. It's good for some things. It's not so good for this helmet. Um, it, the helmet's too thin. If you're not too careful with this, you'll melt through the first layer, the outer layer. Um, but this little mouse, Black & Decker one's cool for a lot of prints because it's got this little tiny point up here, so you can kind of work it into small spots. Yeah, Meetup never notified me either. I think I saw a post in the Facebook group. Um, but that is a good point. It is on uh, meetup.com or the Meetup app. Uh, that's for the printed solid um, open house two year anniversary thing. And the whole reason I got to go to the printed solid one is so that uh, Dave Randolph can try to pressure me into buying an enclosure for my CR-10. Every time I look at that thing they have, um, just makes me wonder if it's worth building one myself or not.
Yeah, that's sort of how I am. I mean, it comes in handy for some stuff. That that palm sander, the mouse sander from Black and Decker. I think that's Black and Decker. It's orange and black. Yeah, Black and Decker. Um, it's nice for some things, but yeah, I bought it thinking, oh, this will be useful as hell. And yeah, not really. Um, it comes in handy occasionally, but I use it a lot less than I thought I would. Yeah, <laughs> That's, this thing is so big, trying to hold it and sand it. Like I said, being able to put it in my lap, that worked great this evening. I mean, I've been sanding this for going on four hours, and having it in my lap was a heck of a lot better, but my lap's also the same color as my desk is here. <laughs> I know, this is probably a really boring stream to sit here and watch somebody sand, but I figured it would give me somebody to talk to while I do it. Plus, I'll probably, if I do shoot a, a full video on this, which I'm, I've been shooting snippets of me doing each part of the process, I'll probably pull some of this video for, uh, for the YouTube video. Home Depot has filament on their website? Yeah, exactly. BSing while you work. <laughs> Thanks, country. Have you done anything more with that TiVo yet? I know you guys probably can't see the progress I am making on this, but this stuff is coming off pretty well. I just put it on a little too thick. Now there are some spots like this bevel in here around the helmet. I'm not actually going to sand all the wood filler out of there. I smoothed it as I put it on with my finger and then lightly sanded it with some 120 grit already. Um, so that's actually going to stay there because one of the side effects of scaling this model up 300 some percent is this got a little funky. I mean, this helmet, somebody uh, must have sculpted this in um, ZBrush or Mesh Mixer or something. So like this is a little bit ununiform around here. So I, I made it uniform um, or at least a lot closer to uniform using the wood filler. The other problem with this helmet is too, when you sand it with the opening facing up, it echoes like crazy. Uh, the other thing with this sponge too, this drywall sponge, when it does get clogged up too much with dust, you take and rinse it off. Um, now I'd let it dry before you start sanding the wood filler again. Um, I'm not about to find out on this one how that reacts, but I'll probably end up testing that at some point. Wet sanding and dry sanding wood filler just to see if it sands better, if it screws it up, or what it does, but I'm not about to screw this up. Yeah, that's surprising Home Depot sells filament. I didn't... I thought once they all stopped selling the Dremel um, Idea Builder that they wouldn't carry filament anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure, Juan, uh, what you might do there. What, what for project, if you don't mind sharing, that you're looking for the burgundy? And if anybody's stepped in since Juan asked the question, he's looking for a burgundy or a dark maroon uh, filament recommendation. Harry 
Potter, Red, Maroon. I honestly don't know. I think I saw the first Harry Potter. But I don't think I ever watched any of them after that. And I never read the books. Never, never had any interest in that. That's kind of why I was asking. Uh, same thing as Skewed View said. Are you sure it's not something you can paint? Um, depending on the amount of detail, you can get away on a lot of prints without doing any sanding and just hitting them with filler primer if they don't have a lot of fine detail. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on the... Uh, yeah, nah, no, no Harry Potter. Um, it all depends on the, the model, obviously, if you can paint it reasonably or not. And, and of course, maybe you're not good at painting, I don't know. One, the other thing, I mean, you may not get far with this, but at least you can put the idea in their head. Um, Protopasta has been doing a lot with collar testing right now and um, coming up with a bunch of different collar lines in their, um, in their different filaments. Might not hurt to uh, reach out to them on Twitter and say, hey, you know, I'm having trouble finding anybody who makes a good burgundy or a good maroon. Um, is that anything that might be on you guys' scope? Uh, maybe they don't have the idea to do it, and you might give them the idea to do it, or they might be willing to try to fill a spot that's not there. Oh, he did say cheap, didn't he? Protopasta is... Yeah, protopasta is expensive for... Um, when you're looking at cheaper filaments. But I'll tell you what, depending on what you're printing um, and what quality you want... How many headaches you want? I love protopasta. Even, I mean, for the cost of it, uh, I've got a few more spools. When I got into 3D printing, I said, there's no way I'm going to spend that kind of money on filament. And yeah, I've probably got seven or eight different rolls of protopasta over there at this point. Yeah, filamentum's not necessarily cheap either. Uh, you're right. Uh, Talked to uh, filament manufacturers at IRF. Uh, wasn't sure how soon you were looking for. I mean, IRF is only a month and a half away, but but that is a very good point. I haven't actually gotten to see that in person yet, Walter. Time for the dust sucker upper. Everybody told me earlier this wasn't loud, but uh, I'll apologize now for the headphone people. That might have been loud, I'm sorry. Two off-collar rolls and one true roll. How'd you manage that, Walter? Oh, okay, so you have an option just looking for something on the, the cheaper side of it. See, that's the big thing. A lot of the cheaper manufacturers probably won't be at IRF, um, but Printed Solid will, and like I said, they just started their um, daily PLA line, which is like 20 bucks. 
don't hold me to that, but it's somewhere in that ballpark. It was it was meant to compete with like Hatchbox, so like in the twenty to twenty five dollar range, something like that. Uh, so you might be able to talk to Matt Gordon and Dave uh, Randolph at Earth, um, since they are doing their own stuff. They might be willing to fill that slot too. And I'm just saying that as a recommendation to try it. I have no idea if they're actually looking for suggestions or not. That's actually what this filament is. Um, it wasn't named yet when I printed this, um, but it is now. And uh, it's it's called the Printed Solid Daily is the, the brand that they have. Protopasta sent you two off-color rolls as samples. Then a member of the country club sent you another roll. Cool. I've um, a lot of times with proto pasta, I don't just order it off the cuff. Um, now, like the high five blue, that I ordered off the cuff because I'm in that same camp with Chris and Joe Mike, uh, Chris from Practical Printing. The uh, blue, anything blue, but especially things that are like a metallic blue, they're right up my alley. I don't know why YouTube blocked that one. Ah, shit. Juan, I'm sorry. Um, can you retype that? There was no reason for that to be blocked and I accidentally hit delete instead of show. Um, but there it is. All right. Hang on. Okay. Show. There we go. Sorry about that one. Projects for kids to complete. Trying to engage other young people to subscribe to my channel. Still don't have 100 subscribers after Murph. Well, um, one, I haven't seen your channel, but... I am going to open it up in another tab and after the stream I will jump on and subscribe and everybody else should do the same thing everybody at least deserves a chance to uh, impress you Juan, did I meet you at Murph? I, if I did, I apologize now for not knowing I did. But there was a lot of people at Murph. I met Walter and didn't even know who Walter was until I got home from Murph. Sorry, Walter. Okay, so I did meet you. Well, I hope you show your face in your video so I can... <laughs> I, I, I sincerely do not <laughs> mean that in any bad way. Um, like I said, there's so many people at, at Murph. I, I actually, I've met so many people and missed so much stuff as well. Oh, is anybody interested in another Murph... Uh, uh, yeah, Murph YouTube video. <laughs> Recap video. I have a bunch of the footage. I finally put it all together and organized it. And need to go through and like kind of put the finishing touches on it. But Down across from open. Oh, that's right. I am subscribed to you. You're the... Okay, yes, I do remember you now. Uh, you're the one that's doing trying to get kids interested in um, 3D printing and STEM and using the YouTube channel for that. Okay, I do remember you. Yeah, everybody should go subscribe to him. Um, he's doing videos, and Juan, if I get any of this wrong, because it has been a little bit since we talked about it, um, but he's doing videos to um, encourage kids to get into 3D printing, 3D modeling, 
um, working on educational models and stuff like that as well. He had some pretty neat stuff at uh, Murph. Yeah, I, that's why I don't want to get a table for Murph and Earth. I want to be able to roam and not see everything, but at least be free to just kind of go wherever and not feel like I'm tethered to my table. Like, I'm not sure how much uh, John from You Do It uh, got to actually walk around. I know he was at his table most of the time. Yeah, everybody, if you're not sure how to do it, there's if you hover over Juan Adams' uh, username or over his chat on the right-hand side, it'll pop up with the three-dot three, three dot hamburger menu. Click on that, and it'll give you the option to go to their channel, go to his channel. Make sure you guys subscribe. And Like I said, everybody deserves a, a chance at gaining your interest. You don't know until you start watching their videos. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point, a skewed view. Um, getting a table gives you a reserve spot to sit down. <laughs> okay, so he did get to walk around. I wasn't sure if he got a chance... If uh, John from You Do It got a chance to walk around or not. I knew, I mean, obviously Carmelo was there with him. Um, I didn't know Ron stuck around and Sean, I didn't know you were at his table too, um, helping him out. That's that's awesome of you guys to have done that. Yeah, well, and how, how soon? I know you told me you were working on it, but that it was going to be a little bit till you guys got videos up. Um, how soon are you guys going to have videos up on your channel? Um, starting to do like the STEM stuff and everything. I know that's going to be the biggest thing that'll help kind of get you guys to to that 100 subscriber mark is getting some videos up there. And, um, I know you're you're shooting for 100 so you can get your your channel name in the link. Um, but yeah, it'll definitely help. Uh, even if you just release a couple simple videos on 3d printing, um, maybe even kind of recap the stuff that you guys have already done. You don't have to necessarily go over the whole process yet on how to do it. Um, but do something like that, at least for right now, that'll, that alone will help you, um, start to break out in the 3d printing community on YouTube. And it's not going to necessarily happen quick, but it'll at least when people start searching 3d printing your channel will start to get included in that stuff yeah okay that was that was what you said about Winnipeg just won over Nashville, and they are moving on to the next round. Yeah, I bet Chuck's going ecstatic, ecstatic right now. Uh, his one boy plays for Winnipeg. Uh, hockey, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Is that a sport? Yep, country. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Hellebuck's son plays professional hockey. Um, so, yeah, I bet they're going nuts. He's actually, uh, if you look at... Is it Jimmy Kimmel? Not Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, man. I can't think. One of the uh, late night shows, um, they were, they made fun of um, Chuck's son along with a whole bunch of other hockey players as well. But Chuck's son was actually uh, one of the ones that they, they were picking. Not like making fun, but I mean, you guys know what the late night shows are like. It's all comedy. Um, they were carrying on I forget exactly what they did say about Chuck's son.
<laughs> yeah, Robbie Mac. Nobody actually goes to watch uh, to hockey to watch him play hockey. Well, you go for the fights, right? That's why we go. <laughs> Uh, there are presentations at Earth. Um, I'm not sure who all's doing them. I know I'm not. I I don't have a problem talking. You guys know that if you watch the Friday night streams, I can talk and talk and talk. Um, but I'm still kind of Earth and Murph and stuff like that is just sort of all about the event for me, and not really being tied down to anything. That would probably be something that you can get a lot of people interested in, Mon. Um, a lot of people use SketchUp coming from woodworking and metalworking for their plans. And uh, SketchUp is not a fan favorite to the majority of the 3D printing community. And it's definitely not the easiest one, I would say, to use. But now, for somebody who uses SketchUp regularly, you might say something different. <laughs> That's tradition, huh? But you probably would get some interest one at Earth um, of just people who'd like to hear. When it comes to SketchUp, a lot of people like to just hear what the defenses are from the people who use SketchUp. Not meaning like, oh, we like to hear you defend yourself, but I mean... A lot of people have valid points why they prefer one piece of software over the other. For me, I didn't do any modeling until I got into 3D printing. Sorry, taking a hand break again, guys. Who were you asking about not using ABS? You're right, Walter. 4.48 in the morning. Hi, 3D Gusner. How are you? Um, you can see, I'm assuming you just got into the stream, working on, this is not a racing helmet. Um, it's not a motorcycle helmet. It is a 300 and some percent scaled up um, version of a model that somebody had. It might have been on my mini factory. I said at the beginning, Thingiverse, but uh, John Mack had looked and uh, looks like it might have been on my mini factory um i don't have i wasn't really prepared to stream tonight this was just kind of on a whim i decided to do it um but i will have i'm going to post a link to it in the description this weekend to this stream um but this is spacex um the uh one of the forerunners in the commercial space race here in the united states uh, this is the helmet from their spacesuit that they designed for um, taking off in the space shuttles that they're designing um, and going from Earth to the moon, Earth to the space station, um, eventually, hopefully, eventually, Earth to Mars, all that stuff. Um, it's not for, it's not the helmet that they would use for spacewalks. That, they still got to have the big bubble and everything that we're all used to seeing. Um, for actually doing spacewalks and being out in the vacuum and um, the uh, radiation and everything that you're exposed to when you're in space. But this is for in the rocket. It's kind of more of a modern take on what NASA uh, and even now that the Russians use when, they, when everybody launches to the space station. Robbie Mac, you can get away with the CR10S4 and ABS if you put it in an enclosure. Um, but one of the other things, too, is to get that bed up to temperature for it. 
Um, you can still run ABS on it, but you want to do some kind of insulation under the bed. A lot of people are using uh, cork board under the heat heated bed part, the aluminum plate. Um, I've actually been using on all my printers. I've put except for the CR10. I haven't done it yet to that. Um, I've put used foam insulation tape and stuff's like super thin. It's like if it's a quarter of an inch thick, and I know we're talking 3D printing, and I'm talking inches, but it's if it's even a quarter of an inch thick, that's just, that's the thickest it gets. Um, put that on there. It comes just like a roll of duct tape, uh, two inch wide strips of it, and put that on the bottom of your bed. Even without an enclosure, you can get it up to 100 degrees, no problem. There you go, 3D Gusner. That's not a <laughs> that's not a half bad idea for when I get tired of um, sanding. I can just tell them I found it on the moon, and that's moon dust. Just don't let them get close enough to see the wood particles in the wood filler. And that's uh, yeah. Anyhow, for anybody who's just joining, um, at this point, I took the uh, helmet off the print bed uh, sometime around 2:33 o'clock this morning. Um, took it off the print bed after 46 hours of printing it was like 46 hours and 20 minutes something like that of total print time uh, the helmet printed upside down like this to some fashion let me back the camera up here so you can see the full thing sorry for the shaky cam so the helmet printed upright like this it's completely hollow inside it is wearable um and it's scaled up 300 some percent. I, I scaled this up months ago with the intentions of printing it and just finally printed it. Um, but at this point, the first thing I did after I took it off the build plate was went to bed. I uh, <laughs> went to work the next mor uh, this morning. And then when I got home, I took rough grit sandpaper, 60 and 80 grit, and knocked off. You can kind of see just the, the discoloration here a little bit. Right in here, um, you can kind of see these dimples, or not dimples, but um, looks like freckles on my helmet. Um, that was all the start and stop points from Simplify 3D. Uh, I actually, Uncle Jesse uh, just sent me his profile that he's been using, his exact uh, profile that he's using right now. Um, I'm going to give that a go on the next one rather than trying to tweak things my, on my own. Um, I didn't intend for these to be there, but I changed something when I printed this helmet that caused it. Um, he's actually, Robbie Mac, he's not actually using Elkins profile anymore. Um, he's using a modified version of it, stuff, something that he tweaked with it. Because um, Chris Elkins hasn't been too active as of late um, and updating his profile at all. Not that his profile is, not that anything's wrong with it. That's where mine started, and I've changed things so much since I downloaded that profile. Um... But anyhow, so I printed like this, uh, supports up to right about here, somewhere in that area, um, which did leave, you can see, uh, camera, not microphone, you can see all the circles on here, um, this is all where all the support material was, so there was a little bit of sagging, a little bit of uh, pitting and stuff in here, so that's why it's real heavy with the wood filler. Um, sanded down all the rough spots, sanded some of the loose stuff off on here and then coated the entire helmet in one second elmer's pro bond wood filler um the pro bond professional strength stuff is what i would recommend um i actually got this idea from uncle jesse i had been thinking about it and then he ended up doing a video about it um that he gave it a try and was really happy with the way it worked and i can't agree more i was i was thrilled that he did a video about the time i was thinking about it um because there are plastic wood fillers as well and i thought well crap if it's plastic there might be a chance it might adhere to pla or abs better um yeah chris elkin's been mia for a little while uh so i coated the whole thing in a unnecessarily thick coating of uh wood filler and when you put the wood filler on you want to kind of push it across the the grain or across the layers of the print rather than with the layers it, it molds it right into them and if you do it right with the wood filler you can put it on super thin um, and only thicken it up where you need to fix spots 
like I did do that here on these the bevels in here or the the fillets in here um, I thickened those up because this helmet the original model had to be done um, in organic modeling software like ZBrush or mesh mixer so things weren't a hundred percent uniform I mean you can tell when you look at the helmet um, straight on this way you can tell for the most part everything was done symmetrically which makes sense because it's a symmetrical helmet um, but it wasn't exactly straight so I did use the wood filler in here pretty thick and then smoothed it out with my finger like you would if you've ever used a caulk tube um, you put down your bead of caulk and then you take your finger and drag it back across it I did that on here to smooth these out and give them straighter cleaner edges um, and then there was a couple of spots that for some reason the the print did kind of like sag in a little bit I'm not exactly sure why it even did that um, because it was it was like on these sides and stuff so there are a few spots that I'm kind of paying attention to that I'll leave the wood filler a little bit thicker um, but otherwise I'm sanding it back down to the point that you can see the layer lines and the wood fill lines basically it's just alternating um, and I mean this is smooth when I hit this with wood uh, filler primer um, it'll be it'll be smooth it'll be ready for the first coat of paint immediately after the filler primer I probably want to I probably wouldn't necessarily have to sand it the filler primer uh, spray paint I probably will give it a rough, rough uh, or yeah a light um, high grit sanding but that's where I'm at at this point 3d Gusner um, and anybody else who joined in uh, just to kind of give you an update on it and I'm just sitting here sanding <laughs> Uh, the wood filler primer skewed view is that what you're saying takes a day to cure to, for sanding because this is actually the filler primer was on here for or not, I'm sorry not filler primer um, the wood filler was on here for about 25 minutes to a half hour before I started sanding it um, so the, the stuff that I'm using this pro pro bond wood filler again this stuff and this is not a commercial for it it's just a recommendation um this stuff dries pretty quick it's not like the cheaper wood fillers um and actually for that matter just so i get the timing right uh you apply it above 40 degrees um you can apply it with a putty knife for 3d prints i just use my hand um rub it in sand shallow repairs after 15 minutes and deep repairs after two to eight hours so that might be where you're talking if you're if you're working on really deep repairs but i'm thinking by deep they mean like over an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch um is probably what they're talking about for deep or considering deep but they're also talking too for wood the way you can really tell if it's ready start to sand it a little bit and if it starts to turn dark instead of light then it's not ready to sand it yet ITV says cure cures quickly personal experience is to put it on at night and do it the next day and that's not a bad idea for any of these steps really um, I'm trying to get this down to a point that I can take it along camping with me this weekend and work on painting it up there. Um, uh, this time I'm not taking any 3D printers along camping. Um, with having two dogs now, it's going to make that a little bit more difficult to take two printers or take a printer along camping with me. Um, plus, it's always nice to go out camping and just enjoy camping rather than feeling like I need to print something. But it's also nice to have the printers because I can print stuff for the camper and model it and everything right there. <laughs> the paint drying stream. <laughs> if you guys really want me to stream the paint drying stuff, I can do that. Actually, depends on my cell service. I may not be able to stream up at the, uh, up where we go camping.
Yeah, exactly. Now, if you want to get your hours up, you got to do what Walter did and stream for 15 hours, almost 16 hours in one day. <laughs> That's the best way. Yeah, John Mack, the, the campground we go to has internet, and we'll see. This is the first we've been up this year. Um, they do have Wi-Fi, but in the past, their Wi-Fi absolutely is horrendous. Um, you're lucky if you can even connect to it. Um, so, like, when I've streamed for the Friday night streams, I have two options. I can go to the campground store and get on the Xfinity Wi-Fi signal that Comcast has up there, or I can stream for my cell phone. And my cell phone is my work phone. So, um, last summer when I was streaming from the campground, yeah, um, if I was on cell phone, my work wasn't too happy about it. <laughs> you streamed from a trash can. <laughs> I don't disagree, apoc Apocalyptic Survivor, um, but Walter uh, definitely needed some uh, needed some therapy after dealing with that little monster on Sunday. I I was convinced the next day when he did his stream that uh, he had put the dr little monster in the driveway and left it out there with the intentions of possibly lighting it on fire. <laughs> Maybe streaming while doing this might not have been the divine intervention. There you go. Streaming while sanding this may not have been a good idea because I keep stopping. <laughs> nah, alligators down there. I don't know. I guess you guys might have bears down there, too. I'm not sure what all Florida's got. <laughs> hey, Fernando. Thanks for joining in. Working on the um, SpaceX interplanetary spacesuit helmet. Um, and as you can see, it is actually a wearable helmet, though you can't see out of the face shield because well, it's solid. Um, there is the potential future plan to either cut this one out. This one's going to get hung on the wall. It's not really intended to wear it, um, but it's the first time that I've taken a model and scaled it up, made it hollow, made it wearable. Um, this came from a model. The original size of this thing at 100% scale was like half the height of the helmet. It actually is. 3D printing trucker. Haven't heard of 3D printing trucker before. In a big rig while driving around the country. That's kind of cool. Well, Mike, in order for country's uh, Tiva Little Monster to attract the bears, it would have had to be printing in order for the PLA to smell like honey and attract the bears. I'll have to check that out. 3D printing trucker. <laughs> the one thing that does suck about this filler primer or, God, I keep calling it filler primer the wood film I'm going to bring the camera up here if you guys can see right there see all those spots in the wood filler they're actually tiny little flakes of wood. Um, it's in the wood filler to help make it more look more realistic and blend in. Um, 
but it is even though i'm sanding with 120 and 220 grit because this stuff's built up so much it is super rough um even with fine sandpaper finer sandpaper um you have to um you actually if you're going to use this to build up and you have those little flakes of wood in them uh you gotta use higher grit sandpaper to get that smooth down but in my case i'm sanding back down to uh to the point that i can see the pla layers and the uh, wood filler that's filled in between those layers and this was printed at a 0.2 millimeter layer height for those that i didn't tell that to What are we holding on for, Walter? I'm waiting. Taking a handbrake again. Oh, Fernando, you're going to Earth, too. We'll see. Definitely see you there. Oh, you were looking to see if it was the T-slot. I wasn't sure if you were doing doing what I was doing on your stream where I told you something and then told you to wait. <laughs> what did you get from Polyalchemy Country? Um... Oh, that's cool. You got to meet uh, a skewed view 3D, and I'm. I always thought everybody was saying Sean. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Sean, is that right? They need surf in the south, so people in Florida don't have to drive that far. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. What is the difference between what you guys had to drive for Murph versus Earth? It's probably only like an hour, maybe two hours difference, ain't? Possibly a little bit shorter because you got 95 the whole way up. Give me a second, water. Should I put water in timeout? There you go, water. Now you should be a moderator. Cool, Fernando. You can feel the layer lines a little bit, but they're not like they were originally when it came off the print. Or, yeah, came off the print bed. The other thing is, too, this was printed at 0.2 millimeter layer with a uh, 0.4 nozzle. I still have yet to put a bigger nozzle on my CR-10. Um, the thing prints so damn well with a 0.4 nozzle that I just, I'm sort of afraid to screw it up. I mean, I know how to fix it if I do, but... It's one of those, it's kind of, I got the idea, don't mess with it if it works in the back of my head. I'm not on Discord at all, John Mack. He posted a picture link, okay. Okay. <laughs> 
That's not the case, Walter. Let me see. PBS, PBS TW image, huh? Open link. Oh, you got the blue and the orange. That's the... Is it midnight blue or sky blue? Not sky blue. I want to say like the midnight blue or something like that. Elixir. They're... Um, for anybody who's a Baltimore Ravens fan... Um... The oh, that's night sky. Um, crap, what's the purple? The dark purple one. Oh, I can't think of it now. Um, Polyochemy makes a purple that's something night. They have the night sky, which is the blue, um, blue and orange. Oh, yeah, for uh, oh. What team is that or college or whatever? Um, I'm not that good with sports. Crap, I about half want to walk over and see what that purple is that I'm thinking of. But for anybody who's a Baltimore Ravens fan, that purple is like the perfect purple color. Um, there's Night Sky, which is that blue that Walter got. The Gators, that's it. Florida Gators. Um, is it Nightshade? It might be Nightshade is the purple that I'm thinking of. Um, that stuff's pretty freaking cool. Black and gold. Are you serious, Robbie Mac? Nightshade. Yep, Nightshade. Black and gold. Tell me that you don't like black and gold because of the Steelers. I think maybe Robbie Mack does like the Steelers. He ain't answering me now. <laughs> Robbie Mack has left the chat. Man, you New England fans. <laughs> you know what, I John Mac, I was uh, <laughs> Robbie Mac and John Mac. I'm starting to every now and then I get you guys mixed up. And John Mac, you've been around on Friday night streams since darn near the beginning of them. Um, just the Mac part throws me off. Uh, Okay, as long as it's not because of the Pittsburgh Steelers that you like black and yellow, that or black and gold, uh, then I'm good with you. Uh, what did I, there was something I was looking at in the chat a second ago. What was I just talking about? I forget what I was saying before that. Oh, Robbie Max, uh, John Max said something. Uh, where was that? Why do I not see that message, John Mac? You said something that I was responding to.
Did you like delete a message or something? Where'd it go? Oh well. John Mac, I forget what I was talking about on the second stream when it was still weekly. Yeah, I kind of, to an extent, I kind of miss the weekly streams. Um, I was, we went to bi-weekly because we got into the summertime. We made it weekly up until like the end of June or the beginning of July, and then we went bi-weekly. Robbie Mac, I, I was with you when the Colts were in Baltimore. <laughs> Not lately. I, I like the Ravens. I grew up a Baltimore fan um, when they were the Colts and only became a uh, Philadelphia Eagles fan when the Ravens are before between the Colts and the Ravens, but always been a Baltimore fan just because, I mean, it's close to home. I get to go to the games and um, well, like when the Ravens started up, they had a pretty good team. Sorry. We'll get off sports talk. <laughs> you were born in Baltimore. Cool. I'm just up the road a little ways from Baltimore, about 45 minutes or so. Where's Elkins from? Uh, we don't know the topic yet for the Friday night hangout. Um, I actually, I gotta do my part of organizing and get on and um, find out who's gonna, who's who wants to host, and the host always picks the topic. That's the way we've always done it. Everything Patriots. <laughs> You got a couple other Patriots fans coming to Earth, um, Lauren and uh, Lauren Angers and Nick Angers um, from A Buzz Designs and on Twitter, Vanful of Puppies. Um, they're New England Patriot fans, so you'd have a couple couple of friends there. <laughs> you guys for anybody who wasn't here when i said it earlier if you notice i'll sand a little bit of an area and then jump to a completely different area it's not because i'm add uh <laughs> it's because sanding in one spot for too long with the pla it'll warm up and it can de it can delaminate the first layer that you end up sanding it off um, that's the other reason why i'm not using a power sander and i'm doing everything hand sanding And I'm sorry the camera's bouncing. It's kind of sitting on the table. If I do this again, streaming when I'm sanding, I'll set my tripod up and put the webcam on it. Drive down for a visit country. I wish. I will be uh, Thursday. I think I'm going to be down in D.C. So I'd be part of the way if you want to make the rest of the drive. If you guys notice a lot of times I'm going up and down this way that's because the layer lines like uh, the layer lines basically are going like this because the printer uh, the helmet was printed kind of at an angle upside down so I'm going against the layers um, I'm using a fine enough grit that it doesn't hurt to go with them Thursday yeah I think 
it depends how Tuesday and Wednesday go, but I think I'm going to be in DC on Thursday too. Um, with the grit sandpaper that I'm using, I could go with the layers and not have an issue. But if you are using something a little bit rougher, um, there's a chance that you could just open up the, the layer line again and take the wood, uh, wood filler right out of it. All right, Fernando, have a good night. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Glenn. Fortunately for me, John Mack, well, fortunately and unfortunately, I don't have to worry about uh, missing a flight. I'm driving. I'll be driving down uh, Tuesday, coming home Tuesday, driving down Wednesday, coming home Wednesday, and then possibly driving down Thursday and coming home Thursday. John Mac, you always watch streams from bed, don't you? All right, country, thanks for joining in. Um, <laughs> hope you enjoy the rest of the sanding stream. Uh, I'll probably end up going here for probably 20 minutes to a half hour, probably... I'll stop it at midnight if I get that far into it. <laughs> 50 miles per gallon. Yeah, no, I'm driving my work vehicle, so I'm down around like 12 and a half miles per gallon. EVs, John Mack, or do you have a motorcycle that you take everywhere? You know, on the topic of electric vehicles, my brother has one of the BMW, is it an i3? I think it is. They're fully electric, but has a three or one gallon gas generator in it, uh, Prius. Um, my brother has one of those, and when we went down to Nova Maker Fair, that was the biggest pain in the butt. He didn't have a 500-mile range. He, his range is like 100 and, 160 miles, I think it is, um, with gas, roughly 160 miles, with gas and electric fully, fully filled up and charged. And we had to stop at an EV charging station and walked around a grocery store for... Uh, whatever it was, 45 minutes or something like that, so he could get a, a charge to get down through and then stop and get gas somewhere. Definitely not the type of vehicle for me yet. My, me and my family drive way too much. <laughs> he watched the stream from a hot tub. <laughs> he channeling Joe Mike. Yeah, I haven't seen much from Joe Mike here recently. I haven't heard too much for the streams from him either. <laughs> I 
This thing's getting there. The face shield's almost completely cleaned up. It's got a little bit of thick stuff here on the sides and in the grooves here. This stuff here I'll probably end up hitting with uh, regular sandpaper, paper sandpaper, instead of the sponge. This doesn't quite get down into the deeper grooves. Um, that big chunk over here yet needs to come out of the face, face shield part of it. And some more around the back here, but it's actually a pretty decent amount of progress just during the stream itself. I know I started this before the stream. But this whole section here was completely covered when we started out the stream. Yeah, that's why my brother has the, the BMW i3 and isn't too concerned with it because he usually doesn't drive more than 40 miles, I think, to work. And there's a, a electric charging station right there at his job. So he can charge at home on the 220 uh, overnight and charge at work. Typically doesn't have to get gas unless he decides to go somewhere a little bit further. soon going to be time to clean my sponge. I'm starting to clean. All the pores are getting plugged up for the most part. There's a little bit along the edges, but I don't like using the corners because of digging into anything. Um, once this sponge, this is a drywall cleaning sponge for anybody that wasn't here when I said it before. Uh, or not a cleaning sponge, but a uh, drywall finishing sponge. It's 120 grit on one side, 220 on the other side. Um, but it, it's a nice squishy foam uh, block. The idea is you can wet sand with this thing. You can soak up water in the sponge and it slowly comes out through the grit. Um, the only reason I'm not doing wet sanding to keep the sponge clean and keep the plastic cool is I haven't experimented with the wood filler that I'm using, so I'm not sure how it's going to react with it and if it would totally ruin it. So I'll do something small another time that I don't really care about. I have pieces back here for a Captain America helmet that I printed months ago, like nine months ago, um, that I haven't assembled yet. I may give it a try on that because I kind of just printed that because I had nothing better to do at the time. Um, so I might give that a try, see how wood filler does with a wet sanding instead of a dry sanding. Wet sanding is usually nicer for 3D prints because it doesn't heat up. <laughs> yeah i can i can believe that john mac and turn every feature off that you possibly can that's like my brother in the the middle of winter time i mean it'll be 10 degrees outside since he bought that bmw now this was the first winter that he had it and uh he'll drive with his heat off and everything now that thing will heat up automatically in the morning on a schedule 
Oh, I'm sorry, preheats, but then he won't turn the heat on. Like, him and I drove down to Printed Solid, which is about an hour and a half drive for us. Um, and <laughs> he didn't have the heat on the whole way there. And I like heat. <laughs> That's one of the things a lot of people with electric vehicles like to do, though, is try to maximize the uh, the mileage. I mean, people used to do it with gas, well, still do, with gas engines, too. Um, but it's always kind of funny to hear the stories of people with electric vehicles and what they've done to extend or make sure they get where they're going or whatever. It's a wonder electric vehicles don't um, look at, well, I guess they do regenerative braking, so they're picking up the heat from braking and turning that back into energy. I was going to say pick up the heat from the brakes and turn that into a refrigeration loop or something that is able to then transfer that heat to the car. <laughs> is that how they're doing it um that makes sense but it's still i mean still draws down on your heat it's still electric heater of some sort yeah until the battery technology uh and electric car technology evolves more um, that probably won't be an option for us. Oh, so it is. Okay, you got an electric heat pump. That's kind of cool. Um, one, an electric vehicle for us would be nice because my wife only works like less than a mile from our house. Um, so like for her, she wouldn't have to charge the car for like a God, I don't even know how long it would take. Although she'd probably be cranking the air conditioning. Um, the, yeah, she wouldn't have to charge too much to drive back and forth. I mean, a week, she could go easily a week without charging the car, even running to the grocery store and back and stuff. Um, but I guess the idea is to, you have one electric vehicle for commuting and I have my work vehicle, so I don't pay for gas or anything, but, um, I guess the idea is you drive for drive for work or yeah, drive to work and then when you take longer trips then you take the family vehicle type deal or the SUV and stuff. I like I like my bigger vehicles, SUVs and trucks. That's sort of me right now, a skewed view. Um, stick with combustible combustible engine, except I did convert to electric uh, a couple weeks ago in one aspect of gas engines versus electric. I got totally t sick and tired of gas uh, lawnmowers and um, weed whackers and stuff like that, small gas engines. So we did finally, uh, the last two years, our gas push mower has been nothing but a problem. And um, we did finally break down. We bought a, one of the electric push mowers with the battery operated ones. And that thing is freaking awesome. I can do my entire yard. Um, it's got got the assisted, or um, shoot, self-propel feature, but pff, you really don't need it on my yard. Um, and you can easily mow the entire yard, um, which is just over a quarter acre on half the battery if you don't use the self-propel. If you use the self-propel, you get like 90% of the yard done before it dies. But that's one aspect of my life. I'm glad I won't ever have to deal with a gas engine.
Not that that even compares to a car, but... Yeah, my brother's BMW, um, the i3, I think that's what he has. Um, that thing's roomy, I'll give it that much. It's an odd-shaped car, though, like, it's, it's kind of a big vehicle. Well, big for a car, that is, obviously. Yeah, if I had a bigger yard, John Mackey, it would be a little bit different. I had a riding mower just because it's convenient, but it wasn't fully necessary. And even that, that thing's at my grandpa's now. He works on small gas engines, uh, like lawn mowers and riding mowers and stuff. Um, and more so modifies the tractors than anything. So I ended up giving that to him. I wish I could say the same thing as Skewed View. Um, <laughs> not having to drive, or yeah, not having to mow is a luxury. <laughs> That's the only good thing about winter. At least in my eyes. Five dollars each mo. That's not a bad price. It's pretty cheap. <laughs> How do we go from three D printing to? Electric cars, that I guess is kind of reasonable. And now we're on electric mowers and lawn mowing. <laughs> it's kind of like the Friday night chat. Starts out 3D printing and then it can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, water can, uh, we, we can keep him going just for, uh, distractions, ain't So there's something to watch out for. I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. 
this spot in here because I'm, I'm really working at getting this last little bit out of the, the face shield, um, or the last major bit out of it. Um, so I, I kept saying about moving around and I'm working different areas. Um, moving around doing different areas because if you're sanding too long in one spot, you'll warm up the PLA and it can start to deform. It can start to uh, separate layers if you keep going too much. Sanding this spot, I'm pushing pretty hard on it and I wasn't really paying attention to the temperature. And I started to hear, because of how thin this thing is, I started to hear it kind of flexing and popping a little bit. So I'm going to stop in that area, let it cool down, move on to something else again for a little bit. Hey Tanner. <laughs> That's a good idea, Robbie Mac. I always tell my wife we have, um, like I said, we have just over a quarter acre, and um, I always tell her if we make the gardens bigger, we don't have to mow as much. Yep, uh, yeah, Tanner, we're working on this. The, well, it doesn't really look like much from that angle. Um, it's not a racing helmet. It's not a motorcycle helmet. It is the SpaceX um, interplanetary uh, space suit. Um, it's the same helmet that Rocket Man or Starman or whatever, whatever they called the mannequin that they sent to space in the Tesla Roadster. Uh, when they launched the Falcon Heavy. It's the uh, same helmet design, well, a design based on that helmet. Um, took 46 hours and 20 minutes to print it from start to finish. And at this point, uh, I'm in almost six hours in sanding, uh, but I'm sanding off the uh, wood filler that I put on it, um, the Elmer's Pro Bond wood filler, which is, I, I sanded a little bit to knock off a couple high spots with some rough, uh, heavy grit, 60 or 80 grit. Um, did that first and then put wood filler on. And this will probably be the only sanding that I do on this helmet. Once I get this cleaned up, it's probably going to get filler primer sprayed on it. Um, the layer lines, you can hear them a little bit if you drag your fingernail down it. But I mean, they are pretty much gone at this point. Um, so that little bit, the filler primer will fill it in, no problem at all. The cool thing about this stuff is, compared to uh, Bondo and, um, man, I still can't think of the name of the epoxy stuff. I have some over there in my office in the drawer. Um, the epoxy two-part epoxy coating from smooth on that people are using to apply to it um xtc 3d there we go that's it i finally thought of it it's been what two hours and i finally thought of it using the same filler on your truck oh the xtc yeah um i was gonna use that on this helmet but because of my CR10 profile wasn't very tuned, so you can see the little bit of warping that I got from um, supports not being quite close enough to it. Um, close enough that they detached really easily, but they probably could have been a little bit closer and I could have still got a clean removal. Um, so you can see how rough this was. Oh, the wood filler, that's what you were going to use. Um, 
This stuff's awesome. It sands. It, well, number one, sanding is easier. Number two, it dries fast. Um, the the cure time till you can start sanding is like 15 minutes. Um, as long as you're not doing real thick, deep repairs that, by thick, I mean like a quarter of an inch thick repairs. Um, it works pretty well. I, I've used it in the past and I used it on my K2SO head that I put the, the electronics in it and made it randomly looking around the room. Um, that I did with filler primer. That thing there was printed in two pieces split right up the middle. And for some reason, the right hand side of it, if you're looking at the front of it, was a, um, 10 or 15 millimeters shorter than the other than the left hand side. So I actually used that much wood filler and smoothed that whole thing over. And you can't tell to this day that there was ever two pieces there, let alone a 15 millimeter gap in height uh, between the two of them. The bottoms, everything matched up perfectly, but it just, it was too short. This wasn't actually a, a printer problem. Oh, you're talking the uh, accuracy for the multiple pieces. Um, that's one thing I fortunately don't have too much trouble with between the Flash Forge Dreamer that I have and now the CR10. Those two print dimensionally accurate pretty well. I mean, within 0.2 millimeters. Yeah, if, uh, Tanner, if you use the, here's the wood filler that I use. I'm not sure if you're in the States and can get this or wherever you're at, if you can get it. Um, it's Elmer's Pro Bond wood filler, uh, the professional strength stuff. This stuff is one of the better ones to use because it dries quickly and everything. Um, but this does say if you're doing deep fills with it, you want to wait, uh, what was it? I think it was two to eight hours. Yeah, two to eight hours after you apply it before you sand it paint it do all that but otherwise like for thin stuff like his helmet just filling in layer lines um it's a shallow sand shallow repairs after 15 minutes and apply paint after two hours so i mean i get done sand till i'm done sanding this i could hit it with paint right away but i'm going to hold off on that till this weekend i'm going to take the helmet along camping with me and uh work on painting it up there. And the only reason that I've got to sand this thing too much, so much is because um, I put it on a little too thick. <laughs> Otherwise, if I'd have put this on as thin as I should have, um, which I did in some spots, I'd be done sanding by now. I'd be ready for paint. Oh, I, I agree. The using super glue and baking soda is definitely a good way for filling gaps. Um, it's quick and works great as a filler. Robbie Mac, did you mean by the the super glue and baking soda trick? Yeah, for that you put down some baking or sorry, you run your bead of super glue and then you just take and sprinkle baking soda in on top of it, and uh, it fills it. The baking soda makes it easier to sand than typical super glue is kind of a pain in the butt to sand, but the baking soda um, makes it pretty easy. I shouldn't say it is a pain in the butt; it can be a pain in the butt.
Guys, I gotta turn on my fan here for a minute. Clean up some of this mess. Uh, yeah, sort of a big vacuum. I don't know, how bad is that? Can you guys hear me with the fan running? Is the fan too loud? How's that work? I haven't tried this before. Is it kind of, Juan, is it kind of unbearable with the fan on it's like a low hum great so my blue snowball uh is working pretty well then i was concerned i i'd like to keep it on when i'm sanding um but i was concerned with the stream that it was going to be too loud very annoying there you go thanks glenn that's kind of what i didn't want to be um yeah for those of you who are kind of checking this thing out that's what it is. It's a furnace blower. Um, goes up out of my basement window. And um, there's a filter between the screen on the window, uh, or on the outside, and the end of that tube, the flexible. This is just all flexible hose going up there. So it comes down. This thing will stretch halfway across my basement. So behind me here, it's a mess at the moment because we haven't been doing much painting. But this is where we do all of our painting. Normally this hose just comes over and sits right here where the helmet's at right now um, and we actually spray paint straight back at that white wall back there and you can see there's no paint on that wall um, and one of the last things that I painted over here was jet black so it works really well it's loud but it works well Yeah, this this is cool just because it it allows me to do stuff in the winter time um, when it's not warm enough to paint things, which seems to be the time of year that my wife always wants to paint stuff. So I'll do it down here on the bench. I can spray paint. I can do whatever I want, and the the odor or the paints don't go up in the house or anything, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> nice, or I'll be back. Well, that's good to know. I mean, if I am doing something like painting or something down here, at least I know I can do the stream, have the fan on while I'm painting or spraying paint or doing airbrushing and then pause it for a little bit, talk a little. That, that's good to know. This is a different area than where I do the Friday night streams. That's the area I do that in is over that way towards the camera right there. It's a good thing it's not 3D. Sandy. That's cool. I'm glad. Thanks for the input, guys. Sometime I'll probably move that fan outside. Um, that way all it is is the hose coming in here, but 
for now, this works. It allows me to close things up when I'm done, not have any chance of rain or anything. But it, that's the other thing I want to do. At some point outside, I want to build a little roof over this window so that I can basically keep it open all the time um, and just put the hose in almost as a permanent fixture. But if I decide to take it out, I actually I do have a fan speed control on it, John Mac, um, right here. I have a dial, so I had it on high speed just so that I could swish everything off the desk. If I'm, if I normally am sitting right here sanding and have this thing kind of back here off right at the edge of the table, just like that, um, I can sit here and sand over here and it sucks it right in. Um, yeah, no, it actually, it doesn't blow in my neighbor's yard. Um, it actually blows out into uh, my vegetable garden. But like I said, there's a filter there that catches everything because it still has the screen on it to keep uh, keep mice, rabbits, birds, whatever. Uh, birds. Um, keeps them from being able to get in when the fan's not on. I could, but on the size of that blower, the uh, solid state relay and PWM would probably get ex slightly expensive. Um, but it would probably be doable, though. Um, it's not a high amp fan or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, so it, it blows out. You can't see it here because of the insulation in the window, but there is there's an air filter between the end of the pipe and the screen. It's just kind of like sandwiched in between the two. So that filters everything out. Yeah, and doubles as a pesticide. There you go. <laughs> um, but it works great. I, it's an awesome system to have. Um, I know Uncle Jesse, um, he was looking for something, and I think I sent him pictures of what I did, and I think he's going to do something along those lines. Sort of mulch, yeah. Yeah, it's for sanding, yeah. You're absolutely right. It's, you're just sending wood out there. Wood and some corn based plastic. guys i think uh, i'm probably gonna call it quits for the night on this um i got a pretty close i can take that sanding block with me when i go camping tomorrow um my hands are getting sore from doing this now it's been like just uh, just about six hours i started this around six o'clock it's just about midnight now um does anybody have any questions about any of the stuff that i have done so far to this helmet or future plans for it or anything like that that as far as post-processing plans and everything how i'm going to do things or any other questions before i decide to sign off this is your uh for those of you in waters country club this is your squirrel moment <laughs> skewed view you're giving up that quick huh have a good night <laughs> if I can get it to sit up there. Look, there I am. Um, it will not require a second coat. Uh, if there were big imperfections in it, then yes, very very likely it would. So I got everything smoothed out. Like if I was actually going to keep um, anything except for everything except for this, uh, this fillet right here around the mask is basically going to disappear. totally mulch you're absolutely right um 
Yeah, so like this deep groove here, the fillet, um, because I wasn't happy with the way the model was, it wasn't smooth enough. Um, so I filled that in. That's going to stay thick like it is. Fortunately, I put plenty of it on there. When I put that on there, you couldn't even see any of this. It just like covered up the whole thing. So you couldn't see this inner fillet. You couldn't see this fillet. Um, and then through sanding it down, while it was still wet, I took my finger along here and smoothed this out as best as I could. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure, Glenn. Um, but yeah, so like this will stay thick. When I sanded it, um, if any of it would have, any bigger chunks would have come out or it didn't seal up properly, especially like as I held it up to the blower and sucked the dust off of it, every now and then what you'll see is um, you'll start to get some pits where you had air bubbles in the filler primer. Damn, filler primer. Um, wood filler. If you had air bubbles in it and you didn't smooth those out good enough, and you start sanding you'll get like air pockets in it kind of like you can with bondo um if it's not properly mixed and smoothed out but um as far as the stuff on the layer lines the majority of this helmet i'm sanding it back down to the layer lines and stopping there so i won't have to apply a second coat unless i see a, a blemish or something that i'm not happy with um there is some curvature down in here that I'm not sure if I'm okay with it yet or not. Um, it is on both sides. Originally when I looked at it, I didn't think both sides did it, but both of these sides kind of go like, eh, this is hard to do looking at the camera. Both sides kind of go like this and kind of cup in, but it's like a real shallow one. So yeah, uh, Juan's absolutely right. If you're going to sand fillets, it's better to do a block that a 3d printed block that you take a piece of paper, sandpaper, stick it in that way. It matches your fillet. Perfect. Um, and I probably could do that. I probably should do that on here to be honest. Um, so we'll see. I, when it comes to sanding, I came from doing a lot of woodworking and, hand sanding everything um only using a block sander if i was doing something that was flat and level um anything that was contoured i always hand sanded it to my liking essentially and i've never really used like the contoured sanders but if you want to be able to do it quick and easy and know it's uniform yeah a block sander a contoured block sander would be perfect i probably will end up going just doing it by hand down to what feels right um, just because that's the way I'm used to doing it uh, let's see love the smell of toxins in the morning <laughs> okay uh, let's see pig farm north is this is the smell I could do without it's the well water testing I do annually that worries me with the pesticides <laughs> yeah yeah I'm sorry guys I'm just ch catching up on the chat here to make sure I didn't miss anything uh, have a good night John Mac I saw you were signing out I missed that as I was kind of dusting my hands off let's see you recommend the 3D oh, yeah. pretty much back up to it um Robbie Mac, actually, I don't know about Siri, but I know Google does that. Um, you can ask what's 42 and it'll tell you, um, answer to life, the universe and everything. Um, or you can, I think you can ask it to what's the meaning of life and it'll come back to um, 42 is the meaning of uh, the answer to life, the universe and everything. All right, well, I think with that, um, if nobody has any more questions about the helmet, here's where we ended up tonight. Pretty good. I'm actually really happy with how far it's come along in just a day. When I did my short trooper helmet, 
it took me over a month and now it was 19 pieces to do it um, to assemble but this is looking pretty good I mean all the gray light gray areas are basically done at this point it's only these heavy areas that are still tan or whitish looking that I need to sand down yet so you can see there's still some spots back here on the back of the helmet um, the top is pretty much done um, there's a few spots in there that kind of blend in that need to be sanded down a little bit better um, there's some filler powder on there but that's where we ended up so I think that was pretty decent progress for the night um, Hopefully I'll get to finish this up this weekend and paint it and all that. But like I said, I probably won't do that on a live stream. Um, I do plan on maybe doing some more live streams in the evening, um, starting like 8, 9 o'clock at night and run until like 11, 12 o'clock um, Eastern Daylight Savings, Daylight Saving Time or Eastern Standard Time, depending on the uh, season. So thank you everybody for joining in and... I will see you on probably the Friday night 3D printing community hangout next week on the 20th at 10 p.m. Eastern EDT, Eastern Daylight Saving Time. So have a good night, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for chatting. And uh, I'll catch you later.